The origins of the free cities are as disparate as their peoples, yet all owe their existence to the Valerian freehold. The free cities of Volantis, Mir, and Lys were founded as trading colonies, while Tyrosh originated as a military stronghold. Pentos and Lorath were first settled by others, only to be subsumed as the authority of the Dragon Lords moved westwards. Kohor and Norvos became a place of refuge for religious dissidents. But no matter their origins, each, for a time, came under the command of Valyria, all save one. The mere existence of the Ninth City was kept secret for a century, and even after it revealed itself to the world, its exact location remained hidden. The Dragon Lords searched in vain, but for all their power, even they never discovered the location of the free city of Bravos. Known as the Bastard Daughter of Valyria, Bravos owes its existence to the bravery and cunning of escaped slaves. En route to a new Valerian colony on the distant shores of Sothorios, these slaves rebelled and took command of the ships that had been their prisons. They turned north instead of south, traveling as far as they could. According to the histories, it was a group of slave women from the lands of Jogos Nai, Moonsingers, who predicted where their final sanctuary could be found, a hidden lagoon covered in pine and fog, where no man or woman would ever be a slave. Bravo sprawls across a hundred islands situated within a vast lagoon. Its seaward sides are protected by towering mountains, while the nearby mainland is covered in impassable bogs and swamps. The only navigable entrance is a single inlet, over which the famous Titan of Bravo stands guard. This massive fortress is one of the great wonders of the world, standing 400 feet high, its eyes burning with the light of roaring beacon fires. Not since the century of blood following the doom of Valyria has any enemy been so foolish as to provoke the Titan's wrath, and the memory of burning pitch unleashed on the intruding ships below is a potent reminder to all those who might look on Bravos with dreams of conquest. Immediately beyond the Titan lies the arsenal of Bravos, a shipyard without equal in the world, where the entire Bravos fleet can lie at anchor and a new warship can be built in a single day. The city itself is a maze of waterways and bridges, linking together islands and floating structures. Where the citizens of other cities might boast of their grand avenues and streets, the Bravosi can be justly proud of their canals. These are as tightly packed with travelers as any street in any city, filled with fishermen, merchants, priests, and travelers. Three main harbors provide access to the city, but countless wharves and landings are the site of unyielding activity. Only in the drowned town can some semblance of quiet be found. This is the eldest part of the city, and many of its buildings have collapsed back into the waters, places where only the poorest live now. Within the alleyways of the city, away from the water's edge, Bravos might be mistaken for any of the other great cities of Westeros or Essos, save for its near-complete absence of nature. Soil is a rare commodity in Bravos, and the city is one of stone architecture and great works of granite. Houses are constructed so close together they seem to lean upon one another, and every inch of space is put towards some purpose. Despite this, it is a city like any other, with a variety of inns, alehouses, and brothels scattered across its hundred islands. It might also be said to be a city of a hundred gods, for every religion is respected within its borders. On the Isle of Gods, located in the center of the city, temples can be found serving every faith. The Temple of the Moonsingers is the most revered, but it presides alongside the Temple of the Lord of Light, the Sept Beyond the Sea, the Cult of Starry Wisdom, and many others. Even gods whose time has ended are honored here, remembered in the Holy Refuge. The most mysterious place of worship is the House of Black and White. It honors what its followers refer to as the Many-Faced God, and is greatly feared as the headquarters of the Faceless Men, assassins, whose abilities are said to be beyond that of normal men. 
Ultimately, however, the city is one of traders and merchants, and it has been said that profit means more than pride amongst the Hundred Isles. Above its fleets and sellswords, the greatest weapon of Bravos is the Iron Bank. Its immense wealth and influence has made Bravos the most powerful of the free cities, and the Iron Bank, it is said, will always have its due. That time may be coming soon. The War of the Five Kings has bankrupted all of Westeros, and many have tried to court the favor of the Iron Bank. Of most concern to the Sea Lords of Bravos, however, is the rumors of a three-headed dragon born somewhere in the Far East. Bravos was founded by those who fled Valyria and the wrath of its dragon lords, and the city would sooner sink beneath the waves than be bound to the will of a foreign tyrant. In Atlas, the Templin Institute investigates the most storied places from across alternate worlds. If you have a suggestion for a future episode, let us know in the comments section. And if you'd like to support us directly, a link to our Patreon can be found in the description.